Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Playing Trades and Comic Books channel. My name's Matt, and today we're going to review 007 number one. But before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, it really helps me out and lets me know what you guys want to see more of. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. All right, we got the cover here for 007 number one. It is a dynamite comic, and it is written by Philip Kennedy Johnson with art by Marco Finnegan. And we start off in Moscow, where a man named Fedor is hacking into something, getting information, and he's definitely on edge. Someone is after him. But luckily for him, James Bond comes in and is able to save him as the bad guys come in to take Fedor. But unfortunately, James was not able to keep him away from them very long. They do end up getting captured, and James is able to escape, but unfortunately, Fedor doesn't make so when James gets back to MI6 headquarters, he's told that since the mission went bad, he's actually taking all the blame and he's going to be suspended. So after a week of suspension, he gets a call from a number that he has not seen for a long, long time. And it turns out it's from an old double O agent that he used to be in a relationship with named Gwendolyn Gann. And she's not just calling to say hi, she's actually calling because something's going on. She needs to meet with James and it needs to be secret mi6 must not know so she tells him to meet her at a specific time on the bridge and when he gets there she is not there when she's supposed to be and he waits the entire night until the sun comes up and she does not show up and that is where i'm going to stop this comic i don't want to spoil anything else so i picked up this comic because i have been a recent fan of philip kennedy johnson's writing and i'm also a fan of the 007 movies from when i was growing up so i figured i'd check this one out and i gotta say i had a pretty good time with it i feel like johnson did a good job with the writing and really capturing kind of an amalgamation of a couple of different james bonds because there's been so many and they all have different tones i feel like this is kind of like a good catch-all James Bond and I think the story was written and paced very well I did have a problem with the art in this book it's not bad per se but there was definitely things that I had to reread a couple times to figure out exactly what was going on I feel like the first couple pages of action were a little bit hard to figure out what was going on or who was where and then there was a couple times where you needed to see what was going on in the background in the panel in order to understand what was going on in the story. And because the art wasn't super detailed, I did miss exactly what was going on in that scene, and I had to go back and read it a couple times to figure out what I missed. So I thought things like that could have been better, but then sometimes the art would be really good. Like there's a flashback scene where we see how James met Gwendolyn, and I thought that one was done really well. It differentiated itself from the present day artwork, so I knew we were going into a flashback. So things like that were fine, and I liked that stuff, but maybe the layouts could have been better as far as what's going on in each panel, especially in the action. So I'm going to give this book a 3 out of 5. I think it would have been a little bit higher if the artwork had been a little bit clearer, but this is a recommend. I enjoyed this as a casual James Bond fan. I felt like it was really good setup for the story, and the pacing of the issue was well done. And it definitely sets up at the end for future storylines and leaves you on a cliffhanger, so I appreciate that. So if you saw anything you like, definitely go pick that up at your local comic book store. And we will see y'all in the next one.